The visitor has discovered that sometimes children have problems that are just as important as those that face their anxious parents. This old country house with its picket fence is the home of a young lad with a pretty important problem. The calm and serenity which many of us crave doesn't suit him at all. He yearns for excitement and adventure. So when he can't find it, he relies on a vivid imagination. But then things begin to happen and it becomes hard to tell fiction from reality. from Mercury. Our neighbor, Mr. Peterson. Yesterday was the man from Mars. I better get started. Dick, you're gonna have to do something about that boy. Like what? Like spending more time with him. He's by himself too much. It's a problem living way out here on the island. Not enough kids. It's supposed to be a development. There aren't many people around yet. A lot of Long Island Sound, scrub pines, and, and a township. You can't even call it a town. What you don't seem to realize is that for a child, it's lonely. Well, what do you want us to do? Move back to the city? I just want you to talk to him more often. Spend a little time with but him. I work all week. Not weekends. Pop? Yes? When a man has a wooden leg, does he feel it when it rains? He imagines he feels it. Doesn't really. Emily, where are my new cufflinks? Why'd who have to wear a wooden leg? Long John Silver. Mr. Peterson Long said... John Silver? Oh, Long John Silver. You talk about people in books as if they're real. That's uh, Treasure Island, isn't it? Yeah, I found it in the cellar. Has your name inside the cover. Long John, he's a good pirate. When they get to Treasure Island, he's looking for the treasure. But he won't let the other pirates hurt the boy when they capture him. I thought you were in the 25th century. What are you doing in the 18th with pirates? I can be in any century I want to. I wonder if Long John made it in the end, Pop. He was in an open boat going out to sea. Emily, where's that maroon tie I got for Christmas? I'm going to miss the ferry. Third drawer. Pop, you promised you'd walk me down to Lobster Point today. I forgot. I've heard that before. I'll go walk you with him tomorrow, Sunday. You've heard that before, too. Anyway, I've just got to see waters this morning. Might mean a sail. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Pop. We'll uh, go walking on the beach tomorrow, Charlie. All right. But I know what you're thinking of. That last thing you asked me, whether Long John really made it in the end. Remember, it was an open boat. He was all alone on the ocean. He couldn't really make it. He might. You think about it. I've got to run now. Bye, Charlie. Bye, Pop. Bye, dear. Bye. Well, sweetie pie. Let you and me run over to Peterson, hmm? You can play with Al. I don't feel like playing with Al. Anyway, he's too big for me. Well, Mrs. Peterson isn't feeling very well. I told her I'd come by for an hour. Sure you don't want to go? No, I'll be all right, Mom. I'll read her something. All right, sweetie.
Excuse me, Sonny. Is your pop or somebody around? Pop's gone into the city. Mom's down the road at Peterson's if you want to. Yeah, well, maybe it won't be necessary. We're inquiring about a place called Old Whale Pier. It's supposed to be somewhere around here. Old Whale Pier? Don't strike a bell, eh? Seems I heard... Say, you come from town by car? I didn't hear it. No, we came by boat on Connecticut side. Now, what were you going to say about Old Whale Pier? I think. Could be that old jetty near Lobster Point. Don't say nothing on a map about no Lobster Point. You got a map? All right. Might as well show it to the kid. <laughs> well, how we doing, Sonny? Ah, come on, Johnny. He don't know nothing about it. Let's go. I think I know where it is. Now, right, go on, kid. It says on your map, Crowell Point. That's because Mr. Crowell used to live there. Huh? But now it's Lobster Point. Yeah. And me and my father's supposed to go down. Lobster Point, eh? Crowell Point. Well, how do you get there? Well, you go down over the old mill road, over the hill, and then you turn left at the first path. Only you make sure you turn at the first path. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, look, Sonny. If I give you a dollar, would you show me how to get there? Dollar, huh? Hmm. Two miles. It won't take too long. Well, what do you say? No, Mom will miss me. I guess I can't. Two dollars. You'll be there and back before she knows you're gone. No. Yeah. What do you got there, Sonny? Yeah, let me see that. See, that's a real old ship, ain't it? Done real good, too, huh? Where'd you get it? Look at that, Cappy. Yeah, yeah, it's real nice. Mr. Peterson, he made it for me. You like ships, kid? Sure do. So do I. No, there's nothing like a good ship. Nothing. You a sailor by any chance? I certainly am. I used to be. What's your name? Johnny. Johnny. Well, what do you say, kid? You going to help an old sailor navigate to Lobster Point? What are you looking for around Lobster Point? Oh, just an old friend. I ain't seen him for 20 years. Does it hurt when it rains? Oh, it's pretty near all the time, this game like us. How'd you hurt it? Shock. Happened in the Indian Ocean. It happened like this. You see, we decided to go swimming over the side of the boat. And it's a lucky thing for me that I had the knife with me. Because when I dove down and hit bottom, Some other time, eh? But you said... Beat it! Now, look, kid. I got no time. I got no time to breathe, you understand? Otherwise, you and me, we could... We could sit down. But I can't now. So let's leave it at that, huh? Now, go on. Beat it, huh? It says, but it don't say which way. Two hours. Two hours we've been here looking. 
I get my hands on it, boil him. Oh, that's dead. Forget him. Hey, maybe that's a lot of malarkey about him putting down that drawing from memory. Twenty years ago, he stashes his stuff away here. He's got to take off in a hurry. Who says he put it down right in the paper, huh? Maybe this is Boylan's idea of a joke. Hey, he was a lifer. He was in for twenty years. Died talking crazy. We listen to him. Listen to that wind. I keep seeing him walking all by himself on the beach. Hey, Molly. Jim Hans is out rounding up some men now to search the beach. I can't understand why you don't get more officers on this. Well, you ain't got but two men, me and Jim, Mr. Foster. Why can't you get help from Riverhead or Port Jefferson? Every cop between Smith Harbor and Montauk's out looking for these two birds that broke jail. Now, we've got a tip they came over to the island from near Bridgeport. There's a boat missing. I don't care about them. Take it easy. Take it easy. I can't take it easy. You're the one that's been taking it easy, leaving him alone all the time. You're a fine one to talk about taking it easy. Yes. Yes, this is the foster home. Yes, this is Fred Gleason, Mrs. Armstead. You saw two men going down the old mill road with a boy. One of them walked kind of stiff, like he had a bad leg. We've been here too long. Well, I ain't moving, not yet. What makes you so sure it's here? I figured Boiler was lying. Well, what would he want to do with that for? He was in for life. There's no payoff in him giving us a bump steer. I've come halfway across the country to get this stuff, and I'm getting it. I like style. Go on, Cappy. Try looking over that way in the corner there. You let me go now. I'll just run home. Quiet, kid. What I mean is the judge will go easier on you if you let me go because they'll get mad if you hold a kid. Look, will you stop jabbering at me? As soon as we get the stuff, you're out. Now, you sit tight, otherwise you're going to get in trouble. Nothing can happen to me. Can, huh? No, you wouldn't let anything happen to me. Well, what do you mean, I wouldn't? What are you talking about, anyway? I know what I'm talking about, all right. I got some boxes back here. Well, I'll look them over, careful. Mr. Peterson rolls his own cigarettes. Yeah. He was a sailor once, too. Yeah. According to Mr. Peterson, most sailors... Are... I ain't interested. I'm no sailor, kid. I never was one. But you said that... I come from Illinois by way of Texas. And I don't like salt water. So let's forget about sailors, huh? But you said you got your leg bitten by a shark. A bullet got it. A real old 45 slug from a cop's gun. How you doing, Kevin? I'm looking for these boxes. What's the matter, kid? Now, what do I have to be a sailor for? So I'm no sailor, so what? You have to believe everything a guy tells you? Now, I expect to grow up, huh? There you are, funny kid. Hey, hey, I got something here. That's uh, junk. Trigger happy. Now put that gun away. Well, I'll put that gun back in your pocket. Now get back to your looking. Stop looking all over it. I was gonna let no. Go on! I'll watch him. All right, go on. Sit down. You don't do that again, you understand? He wouldn't have dared to shoot. He wouldn't, huh? He gets wild and you're dead, you understand? You understand? Yeah. Well, sit down. I 
know what you were. A cowboy. Yeah. Used to do, do, do some steel wrestling once. Bet it was fun. Yeah, some guy thought he had a better way of getting rich. You ever hear about the cowboy who lasts out a whale? No. Well, this cowboy, he had a hankering to see the ocean. He came all the way east to a fishing town. The people there, they told him there was a whale in the bay. Been there for a hundred years and nobody was able to catch him. So this cowboy, he gets in a boat all by himself. And pretty soon he spots that whale. And pretty soon he lassos him. Like this. And then he pulls himself up to the whale. He climbs on. And he saddles him. And they fought all day and all night. By the morning, that whale was range broken. Yes, sir. My is a baby. And then... You didn't finish the story. Well, they sent the whale back to the range. I mean, back to the ocean. What's going on here? No, nothing is right. I bet I could find it. Yeah. Think so, kid? Yeah, but I'm not going to find nothing unless you promise to let me go home afterwards. We got nothing to lose. All right, kid, give it a try. But you got to promise you'll let me go home if I find it. Okay, I promise. Honest? Sure, sure. You got to say I swear. Look, I said yeah, didn't I? Okay. I swear. <laughs> The stuff's worth a hundred thousand, worth two hundred thousand dollars. Been laying here for twenty years. Treasure. Uh, <laughs> I can figure it out, kid. Well, you see this spear on the map? Yeah. Looks like a bird. Yeah. So I figured maybe he met the nest up in the beans there. <laughs> Smart kid, eh? Can I go now? Sure. So they ain't moving. That's when we get away. You said I swear. You promised. We let him go now, and he blabs before we get a chance to get off the island. All right, shut up, will you? All right, I promised. All right, I'll keep it, too. Now, wait a minute. I'll shut up the both of you. All right, come here, kid. All right, come on, sit down. Now, look, kid. If I tie in a knot, see, and you get out of it in 20 minutes, I'll be keeping my promise, right? I guess so. You better hurry. All right. Now, you see this knot I'm going to tie in, huh? Well, it'll take most men about an hour. See? But I figure a smart kid like you would take about 20 minutes, and then you're on your way home, huh? us up in 10 minutes. We'll never get off the island. I got another idea. We'll take him with us, you see? That way we can make it over to the boat, over to Connecticut. We got the kid with us, so nobody fires on us. That way we make it to the other side, pick up the car, hide out somewhere. Yeah. Well, maybe we won't take the kid, huh? We got to. No, we ain't taking the kid. We ain't taking the kid, that's all. Well, I don't know. Now, you ain't taking a kid, but I am. Yeah, anybody think he was your kid? It's coming with me. And time. You guys better do what we say. You ain't got a chance. Then I want you to do something for me, huh? I'm going out the far side of the shed, out to the water. I'm going to make a swim for it. I want you to give me five minutes and then yell. Okay? You're going to be swimming out there? Yeah. You count the fifth or something, huh? And then yell. You sure you can make it out there by yourself? Yeah, I'll make it. I don't forget. Five minutes. And then you yell. Okay? Okay. Goodbye, kid. Goodbye, Johnny. Hey, that 
leaves camp. Camp? Camp, do you hear me? You better move in. Let's not take a chance. Dad, come on! Charlie, Charlie, you're all right. Pop, that shot! They didn't get Johnny, did they? Come on, Charlie, your mother's waiting. Did they get Johnny, did they? What is it, Charlie? What are you trying to say about Johnny? He stopped camping, and I knew he would. He wouldn't let Campy hurt me. Go on, Charlie. What else about Johnny? He showed me how a cowboy lassoed a whale. He rode the whale. They didn't get him, Pop, did they? He said he'd make it. They didn't get him, did they? Charlie, I've got to tell you. Remember when you asked me whether Long John ever got away? I've been thinking about that. Long John always gets away. Nobody ever catches Long John Silver. And tomorrow, you and me, we'll go walking on the beach. As things turned out, the visitor found plenty of action and excitement in this peaceful country setting. But a story was portrayed for us that meant a good deal more than its suspense and thrills. You see, fiction and fact weren't very far apart for this young man. He found treasure all right. A father who understood him at last, and a long John Silver, as big as life. Once again, the visitor looks into the private lives and minds of the people behind the closed doors and shuttered windows. He finds out what good or evil exists, what joys and sorrows. Come and join the visitor.